Yo, what's good peeps, Azure Soul here, and today I'm going to be doing a personal review of the JRPG Tales of Arise. Yes, I know it came out a few months ago, but I'm here now, I'm here to talk about it, I apologize for it being a little bit late. If you've landed on this video because you're interested and not sure whether or not you'd like to purchase TOA, then ladies and gentlemen, you've come to the right place. This will be a spoiler-free review. First of all, I ain't gonna hold you guys. I'm a long-time Tales of series fan, so there will be some bias in my opinion on certain things. Now, if you need a completely unbiased review, then shoo, you better move on somewhere else. <laughs> First of all, before I go forward, I would just like to say that any of the music used in this video does not belong to me, and I would be posting timestamps throughout the video so you guys can get to any specific part you'd like to get to. Now, without further ado, let's hop in. Let's get this out of the way, so it's been said, you know. Now I played the game on PS5 and this game is absolutely gorgeous, beautiful beyond anything when compared to its predecessors. The visuals for the environments, um, you know, the studio, the animation studio, Ufotable, picking up the animation uh, scenes again, they've been doing that since Tales of Zillia and it's been great that they've like officially been part of Tales since then. It's just nice to see, you know, the game does a good job of immersing you in its world and capturing your attention visually right off the bat, which is always a nice plus. So yeah, definitely graphics and visuals up there. We can get that out of the way. Let's get into the next segment of this video. Next, the story. Now, it actually picks up quite quickly, if I'm being honest. Um, I felt like the game did a very good job of leaving a sense of mystery when we first start the prologue. Its world building isn't too quick, but effective as they always leave you wanting to know more. The overall pacing of the game, or a Tales of game, felt a little fast at certain points, I won't lie. Some arcs felt like they could have done a bit more for their respective themes, but that's just my opinion. Um, halfway through the game, definitely slows down a bit, and the ending is a little dragged out, but I don't mind. Like, I didn't mind because most Tales games endings are dragged out or rushed. It's always one or the other. Like, there's never like a in-between. There's never a decent paced ending in a Tales game, at least in my opinion, right? So it's not a bad or a good thing, really. Just a common pattern I've noticed, you know? Now, I'm going to give a brief summary of the beginning of the story to help pique you guys' interest. But if you consider this a spoiler, please feel free to skip ahead to the next step. So 300 years ago, the world known as Rena completely annihilated the world known as Dana in a war slash invasion. And the Danans are now slaves. <laughs> um, 300 years later. And the only hope of escape from being one is, well, death. Now, if that wasn't dark enough for you, don't worry, there is plenty of dark undertones and story for you in the actual game. So yeah, you start off as a man referred to only as Iron Mask. He woke up not too long ago and isn't accepting that all of Dan is being treated as slaves. Um, he's annoyed that they have no will to fight against these oppressors. But yeah, some stuff happens and he winds up meeting a girl named Shion. Now she causes anyone who touches her be shocked by these painful thorns like no one can touch it or they just get shocked by it but you see our boy iron mask here he doesn't have any sense of pain like at all he gets wounded sometimes and people have to tell him like yo chill let me treat this wound because he just he doesn't have any sense of pain whatever so this fire sword comes out at titties <laughs> he grabs the blazing titty sword and whoops us and that's basically the beginning of the game you see this sword that he grabbed uh is incredibly hot and actually burns his skin like while he's wielding it but because he doesn't feel anything he can wield it, like no one else can wield this sword. Uh, he's the only person capable of touching Shion as well, which allows him to wield this sword. They meet a man named Zephyr, uh, the leader of the Crimson Crows, and Alphen finds his resolve to join this resistance group. And well, the game pretty much takes off from there. Like most Tales games, this is a pretty lengthy JRPG, so if you're not a fan of long games, then this might not be for you. I myself beat it capped at about 70 plus hours, but hey, everyone's playstyle is different, you know? Now we're going to talk about the characters briefly. Again, if you consider this a spoiler, please move on to the next timestamp. So there are six main characters in the game, with Iron Mask obviously being the protagonist. We already know Iron Mask. Here are the others. We have Shion Imeris, Rinwell, Lore, Isara, and Dohalim Ilkaris. The one thing I'd say is each character is completely different from one another. It makes for a nice contrast between the group. They each carry their own ideals, beliefs, and prejudices. One thing I like about this game is the overwhelming dark theme of oppression. There are a lot of underlying tones and quotes the characters mention and say in this game that can be attributed to modern day life. Now I know a lot of games do that, yeah, but this specific Tales of game 
hit right on the nail when it comes to a lot of modern day social issues and misunderstandings between people, especially in this current era of social media. I think the writers did a very good job of representing that all in this game. And I've honestly felt very relatable to a lot of the cast in game. They really do make you think and agree or even disagree with them at times. And it's, it's just very immersive with how relatable some of these characters can be. Now I play all my Tales games in English dub if possible. So I'm going to be talking about the English dub voice actors only. We'll not be comparing them to their Japanese counterparts. Now please keep in mind this is all my personal opinion. You may agree or disagree with me, and that's fine. Everyone has different ears, enjoys all sorts of different sounds, but we'll never always like the same VAs. It's just fact. Yeah, so this segment will be completely biased. So straight up, I love all of them. I love all the VAs for the six characters. Um, basically every VA I heard in this game, really, except one. Now I think they did a very good job with the voice direction in this game overall, and it made it a very enjoyable experience. Specifically, Iron Mask's VA, Ray Chase, completely aced his role, man. Ah, he's, he's just great. I love him. Everything I hear him in, I love him. Um, you may also know him from the Final Fantasy XV game as Noctis Lucius Kalem, or Realmen Sukuna from Jujutsu Kaisen, or from the Kingdom Hearts series as the Master of Masters, a personal favorite of mine that Ray's done. Now, is there anything more to say about Erica Lionback? Now, I personally discovered her within the past two years myself, and she has absolutely slayed every role I've heard her in, including this one as Shion. She does a very good job of portraying this character, in my opinion. You may know her as Catalina in the Grand Blue series, or Jessie from Final Fantasy VII Remake, or even Futaba Sakura from Persona 5. Christine Marie Cabanos is the voice of Rinwell, and I will say I've only ever heard her in one game briefly, and that was in Persona 5 as the voice of Shio. So hearing her consistently do a character was nice to hear. Uh, she grew on me throughout the game, and honestly I can say I'm looking forward to hearing her in other video games. As I just mentioned, you may know her as Shiho in Persona 5, or Makan Shokumako from the anime Kill la Kill. Bryce Pappenbrook. Unfortunately, this is the one voice actor I'm just... Let's get out of the way, man. I'm not a fan of him at all. I'm not. I'm not. I did not like him in this game, which is a shame because he voices Law and he is one of my favorites to play as in the game. But, you know, I tolerated it. Honestly, it brought back memories of Tales of Graces where Bryce voices the protagonist as Bill Lant and... Oh, well, yeah, I'm just... I'm not a big fan. Like, normally after not liking a VA's work one time, I would imagine it also has something to do with the voice director in charge. But after hearing him in two full Tales games and everyone else sounding fine, I, I'm sorry, Bryce. Nothing against you, man. I just don't like your voice. I'm not a fan of you. But obviously, you are a voice actor in your own right, so, you know, respect to that, respect to the grind. But I'm not a fan. Uh, you guys can have him. Bryce fans, you guys can all have him. He's all yours. You may know him as Eren Yeager in Attack on Titan or Kirito in Sword Art Online. Now, Caitlin Galt voices Kisara. Now, she caught me off guard at first. Um, I've only ever heard her in, as Fenico from um, Aggretsuko, and she did a pretty good job there, but she caught me off guard because this character she voices is a completely opposite character from Fenico. They're completely different characters, so I heard her voice in a new light, and I really enjoyed her as the game went on. Uh, she grew on me. She grew on me a lot. You may know her as Fenico from Aggretsuko, as just mentioned, or the Queen from Shield Hero, or Ladislava from Fire Emblem Three Houses. Now, my man, Griffin Poitou, apologies if I botched that last name, no disrespect, this man completely dominated his role as Dohalim. It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Um, this freaking guy, man, I loved him. I personally heard him in the anime Beastars as Louis the Red Deer, and this was my second time ever hearing him VA anything. And it's like he took Louis and just put him in Tales of. Like, it was great. It was honestly a great experience. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing more from this guy. Hopefully in more video games, uh, maybe some more anime as well. Looking forward to it. This guy slayed, in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> you may know him as Louis the Red Deer from Beastars. Now, one thing you guys will learn about me throughout this channel is that music can either make or break a game for me. Now, let me tell you, the music in this game is overall pretty good. And honestly, a completely different vibe from the regular Tales of game motifs that they normally use in their OSTs. I noticed a lot more of a Western style vibe with the tracks in this game. There's a lot of usage of big strings and orchestra type music with long powerful chords for the cutscenes and a lot of the filled areas. Now that's not all for the music of course, that's just a lot that I noticed. Uh, there are some nice piano tracks in here as well, and of course the opening and ending credit songs slap quite hard. <laughs> they slap pretty hard. Uh, the opening doesn't hit as hard as the last game tells of Assyria in my opinion, but I definitely appreciate it. However, I have one major gripe about this game. I have never in my life, 
played a JRPG that had no freaking bass in the battle music. The game's audio balancing is absolutely terrible. I never have to turn down sound effects in a Tales game to try and hear the bloody music. And turning up the audio or voices down just doesn't help at all because in the cutscenes at default volume, the music is way too loud and overpowering the voices sometimes because there's bass, it's got the bass in there. Whereas in battle, it's the total opposite. The voices are so loud, and there's just no bass in the music. You can barely bloody hear it, and it's ridiculous. Now, I love Tales. I love Tales. But they definitely did a terrible job with the audio mixing in this game. And the no bass in the battle music was especially bad because of the music DLC pack. Some of my all-time favorite Tales of Battle tracks, nowhere near as enjoyable. They were nowhere near as enjoyable as they were in their respective games because Bandai decided to take out the bass. So there's just no bass in the battle. <laughs> It was even hard to enjoy some of the new original tracks because it's just no... Well, have you got no bass in your music, man? Like, what? This ain't no old-ass game. This is a modern game, man. I want to hear some bass. Now, if you're watching this video, please, Bandai, please fix this issue for future Tales games. Don't let this... I hope this ain't going along with you guys reimagining Tales games. I don't... I really hope that doesn't mean there's not going to be any bass in future. Like, please fix that, man. Fix that. Okay, now we're going to talk about the mechanics of the game. If you didn't know, as I think I've said it earlier, I might have not though, this is an action JRPG. The way it tells games are usually set up is you have your regular attacks and the art attack, which allows you to form combos and fight in real time, whilst avoiding your enemy's attacks. In this specific Tales game though, they made the combat very smooth and very new player friendly. The game does not overwhelm you with too many systems at once. It gives you a piece of information at a time and lets you digest it before giving the next. However, if you want to know some of the mechanics, then sit back, I'll go through some of them now. Now, you've got your regular attack, which is three hits. That's what it starts off as. You've got your art moves. Your art moves use your art's gauge, also known as AG, and your cure moves use cure points, also known as CP. And then the AG gauge will restore automatically on its own over time, uh, but it restores slowly when you're attacking. Arts, you have up to six art panels where you can slot all your arts in, but that later becomes 12, so don't worry if that feels a bit underwhelming. Um, and you can evade with a control stick using the R2 button. That's basically your bread and butter of your, your battle system. There is the title system, which is comeback, which is your progression system. Um, you get skill points every time you battle, and you use your skill points to then upgrade moves and skills in these titles that you earn while playing the game. And normally, if you don't have a title, it'll show you what you need to do to unlock it, which is pretty handy. That's pretty handy. There's boost attacks in this game. Uh, you summon allies in combat, fight beside you for like a split second uh, this uses boost gauge also known as bg and this restores your ag when used and can be comboed with so it can be filled up faster by landing attacks and using counter rages it's pretty handy and then there's boost strikes now these are one hit kill tag moves when the boost strike gauge is flashing they'll give you a prompt for like a quick time button normally the d-pad and you use a boost strike to basically finish off the enemy and there's a gauge that you fill up sort of like a stagger gauge when you're fighting enemies and that when that's full you can basically hit him with a boost strike and it'll kill him. There's the over limit gauge. Uh, taking damage and doing perfect evades helps you reach over limit. During it, arts cost no AG and enemies do not interrupt you. Uh, but enemies do have this state as well and they glow blue when they enter that state. So look out for that. Mystic Arts. If you play the Tales games, you know there's Mystic Arts in every Tales game. And they're basically your big ultimate super moves. Um, and after landing an art while in the over limit gauge, you can press and hold two of the three attack buttons. Once you use, over limit ends. That's basically how it works. It will activate your Mystic Heart after you do that and it will end your over limit. So it's normally your finisher. When your over limit's gonna run out, you'll finish off with that. Uh, perks, now they did a pretty cool thing in this game. They did a pretty cool thing. Each character has their own perk, which attributes to their playstyle, making them all unique and very fun to play. So Iron Mask has his blazing sword. Xion has grenades that you'd throw and then hold the button and they'll do explosive AOE like damage and like different moves. Uh, Rinwell can charge her magic, which is cool. Law has a continuous assault. You keep attacking, keep dodging, don't stop. Just keep attacking. He builds up damage and he got, unlocks these super like powerful modes. It's pretty cool. Kisara has parries rather than evades. So she's all about her parrying. And then Dohalim, when you perfect evade, he goes into a critical hit mode. Now, you know, that pretty much is self-explanatory with that. You've got the battle chain. Now, every time you enter a battle, um, this battle chain goes up, and if you do consecutive battles, it goes up and goes up and goes up. And when it's maxed, you basically get better rewards for battles. Uh, there's a fishing system, there's a ranch system, which is a way to get uh, more ingredients through animal raising. 
There's a new thing called map actions. And skits are back. Skits are back, guys. Skits are back and they're 3D cutscenes now. I'm just so glad I didn't get rid of skits. It's amazing. There's also a new feature, uh, weapon skins. They've never had that before. I'm so glad they're weapon skins, man, because you'll see like a really cool low level weapon in a Tales game and be like, damn, that looks so cool with my fit. You can't use it later on because it's weak, uh, but now they've got weapon skins, which fixes that. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of in-game outfits and recolors as well, and there's DLC outfits. So that's all just little nice little, you know, things on the side. Overall, Tales of Arise, in my opinion, as a long-term fan, is a perfect game for newcomers of the series, as you need zero prior knowledge to enjoy this action story-heavy game that does a good job of immersing you in its world. And it's a good game for veterans who want to scratch that itch to play a new Tales of game. I think Tales of Arise gives us a good idea of the Tales of team's vision for the future of this series, based off of their interviews about it, and now having played it for myself, I look forward to the next one. If you've made it this far into the video, I would like to thank you and ask that you like, subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and leave a comment below. Let me know if you found my thoughts about the game useful, intuitive, you know, are you now interested in the game? Did you enjoy the game if you have already played it? Do you want to go back and play other Tales games now? Because this was your first one and now you're just, you're in love. Let me know. And have a good one, guys. I'll see you in the next one.